Hey there, welcome to a video on section 6.5. This will be discussing graphs of square root and cube root functions. So we're going to focus on pages 12 and 14 of the thick notes. Um, you should already have this. If you don't, you can always download it from Schoology under lecture notes. So uh, if you go to page 12 and we look at the first function of y equals root x, uh, we're going to make a table. After we make our table, we're going to plot the points. Now I'm going to choose some values that are easy to take the square root of. Like I know it can take square root of 0, it's 0. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 4 is 2. So I plot the points and connect them. So this is generally how a square root graph would look. It kind of looks like a half parabola. That's sideways. So if you were to draw a sideways parabola, it would look like this. But if you take half of it, books on the top half, that's basically what a square root function would look. Um, now, if you think about it, you can't square root negative numbers. So our domain is going to be anything that's positive or zero. And also notice how it starts at 0, 0, and it rises. The range is going to be the valid y values. We haven't really talked much about range. We've talked about domain, but not range. Um, and so obviously, the outputs we're getting are all positive or 0. So here you have to really focus on the graph to kind of get a good feel for the range. Now what if we do some changes? So we're going to look at transformations. So remember, the parent function, the table that looks like this, right? 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. Now, we're multiplying 2. So this will impact y. So the x values stay the same, and I'll throw 9 in for x for good measure. But now i got to multiply the y values by 2. So remember, we call this a vertical stretch. You might remember that from last semester. If you plot the points, I'll have to go off the graph a little bit. That's 7, 8, 9. So you see how the graph is vertically stretched compared to the parent function. Domain is still x grand equals 0, and the range is still the same. We didn't move the graph horizontally or vertically, so we don't have to worry about domain range changing. But here we are going to see a horizontal vertical shift. So let me kind of give you a general equation, which I probably should have done in the beginning. So h is a horizontal shift. K is the vertical shift. A is responsible for vertical stretching like we just saw in the previous example. Or it could be a reflection if A is negative. So it could be a reflection. Well, we see that um, our H is negative 2. And our k is negative 3. This means we're going to subtract x by 2. This means we're going to subtract y by 3. So the parent function again, it's always nice to kind of have it out there for us. 0, 1, 4, 0, 1, 2. So I need to take 2 away from the x values, so negative 2, negative 1, and 2. Take 3 away from the y values, and plot the points. Okay. 
and there's our graph. So domain now is how x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. See where we're we starting? Also, the fact that x plus 2 is underneath the radical, and that has to be positive. So that's an algebraic way of thinking about it as well. And the range, just by looking at the graph, obviously it's rising after negative 3, but negative 3 is included. So that's how we get the range for that. Uh, let's talk about cube roots. So this is page. Um, and actually, you know what? I lied. Um, shoot, I feel really bad about that. <laughs> that's page 14 of the notes. And it's page 12 of the notes. Uh, I'll make sure to put a little update in school, G, so that you guys are not too confused. Um, so if we graph y equals x cubed, we haven't really done that. But if you play negative 2, you know, it's pretty easy. Remember, if you um, cube a negative number, it stays negative. If you cube positive, it's, of course, positive. So the graph's going to kind of look like this. And remember, we're obeying the end behavior as well. The domain's going to be all real numbers. And the range will also be all real numbers. All y values are covered. There's no restrictions for x. And likewise for y, based upon the graph. Now, if I do the cube root, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, swap the x and y columns from the previous graph. Why do you think I'm allowed to do that? Oh, I meant to put um, negative 1 here. My bad. So why am I allowed to just swap those columns? Well, x cubed and cube root of x are inverses of each other. We did talk about inverses uh, in the previous section. These are totally inverses of each other. So negative 8, negative 2, negative 1, negative 1, oops, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 8, 2. The main range will still stay the same. And by the way, um, the main range swap for inverses. So whenever uh, you have an original function, if you have like a domain range or not, um, necessarily all real numbers, um, you just simply swap them for the inverses. So let's do some examples of that when we meet again as a class. So let's look at um, a transformation here at the beginning of the video. So if the parent function, I'll do negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, 8, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. The transformation here we have h is negative 1, and we're going to follow the same kind of um, general format, you know, with the x minus h plus k and the a be multiplied. So h is negative 1, or a is 2. So I'm going to multiply y values by 2. And subtract x values by 1. Plot it. So you see the graph kind of looks like this. So it gets stretched by a factor of two. And of course, we shifted one left. So that pretty much concludes the video. We'll do some practice this in class on Tuesday. And my apologies about uh, getting the page numbers mixed up for the notes. So yeah, there'll be a Google form. Make sure you answer that. And then we'll um, meet again soon. Enjoy the Star Spirit Week. And I'll see you guys later.